Happy days, y'all. Welcome to the Bird Brain Podcast, where the goal is to rise above it all, stay elevated, create that infinity, and up your you. I'm your host, Isaiah, and today we are going to be talking about this insidious concept of parasitic relationships and the levels to it, things that I've realized and finally kind of put into play, but also made awareness of, you know, in my own life possibly, but also it just out in the universe. Okay. So we're going to talk about that today and it's going to be an opportunity for you to reflect and ask yourself the deep, true questions about your relationships too. Yeah. So we're going to get into it. So if you're at home, find some place comfortable, get a pen and paper, um, get some water. <laughs> if you're driving, put on your seatbelt. Okay. Let's go along for this ride. Stay tuned. <music> What's good, y'all? How are you? How's your week been? First week of the year. Down. (laughs) It's been a very, I want to say positive week. Yeah, a very positive week, I'd say, in, in a lot of ways. And just a very proactive week with intention, right? The, the only way things can kind of even come to pass is if you're being intentional about what it is that you're seeking, what it is that you want. And I think I talked about this before because everybody else is talking about it, you know, going into the new year and, you know, removing people from your life or, you know, reevaluating relationships. First of all, you should be spring cleaning all year. <laughs> you know, the clock striking 12 should not be the... A deciding factor of whether or not a relationship goes or stays. Okay. Because if you're already making that choice, that means you were thinking about it before the year even <laughs> changed. So why are you waiting? Correct. And then ask yourself, why have you held on to this relationship for so long in the first place? And again, truth be told, y'all, we have, everybody has the capacity to be negative. And positive, right? Everybody has the capacity to, to, to be just that. And a lot of times we are, right? We all have a journey to go through in terms of what it is that we're working on, what it is that we are not even aware of, what it is that we're comfortable with. And the goal, truthfully, is once you're aware of that, to work towards something different, right? And that's the beauty about it when it comes to, you know, well, no one's perfect or whatever. Yeah, no one's perfect, but there are some people who are very purposeful. Like, that's such a thing that people like to use. Well, no one's perfect. It's like, yeah, I don't have to be perfect to have some level of intention about how I move through life. Right? The two are not mutually exclusive. Right? I love being an imperfect person because it gives me something to work on. I love being imperfect because within those imperfections, I've found a lot of strengths, right? A lot of things that are important to me, a lot of who I am because of my imperfections. And yet, and still my ability to be purposeful with other people is very much there, right? So parasitic relationships. There was this movie called Parasite. It won an Oscar. Um, I think it won a couple of Oscars actually. But it was a crazy movie. It was so it was so good. And I remember when I initially kept hearing about it, I was like, I don't what the hell is this movie? Like, why would I want to watch it? Everybody's saying it's good, but I'm like, I don't I'm not sold on it yet. And then I finally sat down and watched it. I was like, oh shit, this is amazing. And I realized why it was called Parasite. And basically the concept was that one family 
was um, using another family, right? Without giving anything away, if you ever choose to see it, it's worth a watch. Um, using another family, but how they went about it was very interesting. And when it comes to the relationships we have in life, or even like social media, it can be very parasitic sometimes where someone is using you in such a way or you're using somebody else, right? And you're kind of living off of them or living through them. Parasitic. Uh, prime example, I saw this I saw this post and I, I shared it recently. And I was also talking about this because someone had asked me, they were like, you know, how do I get over this person that I love? And then, you know, they moved on. So how do I, how do I move on? And I, you know, basically told them the importance of understanding what moving on looks like. First of all, do you, a lot of people just want to kind of distract themselves from the pain body of quote, quote, rejection, right? This person's in another relationship. That means that they don't want me. They found someone else better and yada, yada, yada. And you get so caught up in somebody else's relationship that you're not even focused on your own and what you need from yourself in this moment. And a lot of times there's this goal to kind of like, oh, well, I'm going to show this person that I'm living my life to the fullest and I'm doing these things and I'm having fun and I'm having a good time. And it's like, but what if that person doesn't care? (laughs) Right. Sometimes we put our lives on display to show people to show other people that we're enjoying life without them. But basically those the people that we're eager to prove something to, they're not in our lives for one of two reasons, either they don't want to be there or we remove them, but they don't want to be there because they didn't value the space. Right. And we can't force people to care about us. Right. And sometimes the more access we give to somebody, the less they feel the need to work, to be in our lives. Right. And not saying that somebody has to earn your love, but truth be told, there should be some kind of prerequisites for people to have space in your life. I truly think so. Um, you can't just have any old body in your life. The reason being is because, like I said, someone will readily tell you, I, I, I just love a lot of times there are people so quick to tell somebody else who they should allow in their life, but you will never walk into a Porsche dealership with $5 and demand that they give you a car or have the expectation that you're going to get a car. You wouldn't even come close to a Porsche dealership, right? The reason why is because you respect the value of what that name means. You respect the value of that car. and You know you can't afford it. Regardless of the fact that if you dent a Porsche, you scratch it, whatever, you can go in and get repairs done on that car. But when it comes to people, then this is what people don't understand. If you walk into my dealership, aka my life, right? And you take my life for a test drive. You bang it up. You scratch it up. It's dense there. It's kind of permanent. (laughs) There is no repair shop I can go to, no repair body shop. And it's going to take me a lot longer to repair myself than it would to get a car repaired. And cars are made in mass production. There's only one of me. There's only one of you. So the idea that we have to allow people access to the only body that we have, mind, body, spirit, you know, the only body that we have, people think that we are supposed to just allow ourselves to be subjected to poor treatment just because somebody else feels entitled to it. No. And in that space, it could be very parasitic because what happens is you become this person who is offering up so much of yourself to someone who's not offering you anything. It becomes parasitic, right? There's a host and there's a person that's living off the host, okay? <laughs> and they take what they need until they either the, the host dies off or the parasite gets exactly what it needs, okay? And <laughs> it's something very dark, but I was like, yo, babies are kind of parasites, <laughs> Think about it. A baby feeds off the host until it doesn't need to anymore. Right. By design, we're kind of parasitic. But when we when we have choice in relationships, we have to understand, are these relationships um, prosperous and progressive or are they parasitic? 
right? Is there a host and a parasite? And how detrimental is that to you or them, right? Are we the parasite in somebody else's life? We're, we're hanging on because this person gives us some sense of gratification or validation. So we hang on to that relationship, Okay. When it comes to the social media aspect, there was this um, there was this woman who said, you know, there are people who monitor your life, right? People that you know on social media that are just monitoring everything you do, but they don't participate in your life. They just keep tabs on it. They want to know what's the tea. They they want to be in the know, and they're constantly watching everything that you do. But they'll avoid you in person. And or won't even acknowledge you in person, right? But they have time to watch your life, but they don't have time to participate in it. It's kind of parasitic, right? They're getting their needs met from you, but from a distance without offering anything in return. For whatever reason it may be, whether it's jealousy, whether it's just being intrusive, or whether it's kind of just having um, access, right? Access without the accountability, You know, it's a weird thing, social media. And, you know, the way she was talking about it, she was like, you know, some people are like, yeah, I'm going to let people see me doing my thing. And, you know, especially the haters or whatever. It's like, I don't want that energy. If you don't mean me well, I don't want you having access to me (laughs) at any in any capacity. I don't want that. Because for me, I don't get anything from it. Right. There's there's no no benefit that comes from me making sure that you are up to date on everything. I don't like peering eyes like it just doesn't it, because from an energetic perspective is like, you know, someone's constantly, you know, accessing or tapping into your energy without your permission. Right. And they're constantly doing it. They're feeding off of it. And if they don't have the good intentions, right, that makes you sick. Truth be told, if we're really like breaking it down. So that whole thing of like, yeah, I want people to watch me as an ego thing because it's like, truth be told, no, I don't. Right. There's this quote that says, you know, there are certain people that could post on social media all day. and You still wouldn't know what's going on in their life. And uh, <laughs> I very much live by that with without trying to be that like I don't try hard to be autonomous it's just how I operate and it feels great and sometimes people ask me they're like oh yeah well you got to interact with this it's like no actually I don't I don't have to do anything because me minding my business does not hurt anybody because they don't have access to my business right Me doing my thing, me taking care of my responsibilities, me making sure I get up every day, go to work, be responsible. No one's involved in that. They don't have the desire to be involved in that. So why should they be involved in the other aspects of my life? Right. I like consistency. (laughs) I enjoy consistency. So therefore, that whole aspect does not really work for me. And the desire to have people watching everything that I do. And just kind of like peering it, that it doesn't feel good for me, right? And like she said, you know, she considers herself an empath, that word. Um, When you're a sensitive person, you can feel, you can feel what is and what's not. You can feel it, okay? You know who's who. And a lot of times the relationships that we're in, there, there could be a level of jealousy. You know, I can't tell you how, 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 how many um, videos I've been seeing about like, you know, a jealous group of friends and, you know, someone in the group is jealous of this person or whatever. And I'm like, every time I see those, I'm like, man, you know what? I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I don't, I, for one, I don't have a a group of friends, right? A collective group of friends. And also the friends that I have or the relationships that I have at this point are very curated. So the, the, the element of jealousy isn't there. You got to be around people who are also um, about doing better and are inspired by each other, right? Your relationship should inspire you. Your relationship should definitely inspire you. and You should be an inspiration in your relationships, right? That's how you avoid the whole parasitic thing because 
if you are, let's say, the only reason why you guys are friends is because you call each other and you, you know, you talk shit and, you know, you vent and all that, it doesn't go anywhere. After a while, it just becomes this negative dump. And energy is energy is energy. So if that's the only thing that your relationship exists on, it's not healthy. Or if a person only calls you to vent and to dump, or you only call a person to vent, to dump, whatever, that's not it. That's not the vibe. You know, when someone asked me as a coach, they were like, well, how do you do, how do you do with that? Because you work with people. I was like, well, there's a difference. I'm hired. (laughs) It's my job. So it's a level of boundaries that I have. And I recognize that the people that come to me, here's how it works. And here, here is how life is set up. And here's what life has taught me. If someone comes to me, that means that they have the curiosity and or the intention to heal something, fix something, work through something, right? That's great. Now, what happens when the person no longer wants to that work, right? For whatever reason, it gets too hard, they're discouraged, or the the thing that they were focused on ran its course, right? First of all, healing never stops. But if someone comes to me with a particular kind of thing in mind, there might be a shelf life to that. But in the way that I work and what I've understood, even when it comes to being a personal trainer, the relationship stops when the person stops working, right? So there's not much I have to do on my end to necessarily end that relationship. Or maybe, you know, if there's ever an extreme boundary that needs to put be put in place, yeah. But overall, it's like the way that I work and how I go about it is I'm very solution-based. So therefore, if someone comes to me with a situation that they're trying to work through, it's like, okay, I'm going to give you some solutions to work through this. So it's not just going to be a dump of what's going on. Um, You're just going to come to me and keep dumping. It's like, nah, we're going to work through this. That's my job as a coach, right? So there is a different kind of um, parameter set for that. Now, within my personal relationships, fortunately, now I can say I don't have those relationships where it's like the only time we talk is if they need to dump something. No. You know, my, the relationships that I cultivate, oddly enough, are all people who are very um, self-sufficient and at the same time, very supportive. Like we're all supportive of each other, but we're all very self-sufficient. And it's not to say that every conversation we have needs to just be love and light. It's like, no, we can have a conversation about a little bit of everything. There's a balance there. And we're not just always talking about ourselves. It's also being mindful of the other person, right? Taking care of the other person in that conversation too, or in our interaction. So it's not parasitic. Now, when it comes to social media, I've started cleaning out because I'm like, there are just things that are, there are just people there we don't engage at all. And there's no reason for me to be, because I'm not keeping tabs on what you're doing, right? The fact that we haven't engaged means that there's been no exchange of communication. And that's fine, right? So there's no reason for you to be taking up space in my home, quote, unquote. Um, And then there are people who are just constantly watching. It's like, nah, I got to revoke access to some degree, right? Especially if you know what you're doing, Okay. The obsession or the control thing or the need to kind of peer into somebody's life that you're not participating in has become socially acceptable. And people are like, oh, well, if you don't want to see, well, don't post what you don't want people to see. It's like, I mean, first of all, I can post whatever I want, right? It's my page. The question is, what, why does it interest you so much? Interest you so much to the point that you don't actively participate in anything you don't support it nothing but you always come back to get your fill what is that it's toxic truth be told it's toxic it's very intrusive and i don't care how anyone tries to spin it to make themselves feel good about what they're doing no it's very intrusive it is what it is call a spade a spade okay so in that space is like look 
that's parasitic, right? Who are you scrolling on and who are you watching on social media? How does how does that relationship, what is that relationship first off, but also what's the rapport? Do you engage with that person beyond just watching what they do, right? Um, celebrities, you know, you know, following celebrity accounts and keeping up with their lives. And I think that's that's also a thing too, where it's like, you know, there are some people who feel like celebrities owe them their privacy and is like, no, do you, you walk out of the house cause you're a human just like the celebrity is right. And you walk out of your house, you go to work right now. If a camera followed you from your house to your job and home, you'd feel some kind of way. Or if people were constantly badgering you and be like, Hey, can I get this from you? Da, 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 you'd feel some kind of way. You'd be like, that's, that's not cool. That's an invasion of privacy. Well, what's the difference? Because a celebrity, it's it's a job at the end of the day. If it's an actor, a musician, whatever, they're actors. That's their profession, right? They're musicians. That's their profession, okay? But they still have a life outside of the work that they do. You get me? Also, if you're the type of person you keep people around because you feel needed, right? I have this relationship. They're my friend or whatever, are you their friend, right? Is it, are they actually your friend or are they kind of like a parasite, <laughs> you know, and you keep them around because it gives you life to have someone need you to feel relevant, to feel important, to feel like you matter. And the only way I'll, again, I said this a while ago, the only way I'll be invited to the party, the life party is if I'm willing to clean up and serve Right. If I'm willing to do that. Beyond that, I'm not invited to the table of their life. They probably don't even have a table, but they come and eat at my table and then they leave. OK, sometimes the friendships that we have are not actually friendships. They're parasitic relationships. And that's also something important to understand. You will never have the tools in life to fix another person who's not willing to do the work for themselves. You, by design, will never have the ability to emotionally fix another person. It has to come from inside. It has to come from inside because what you're going to do is you're going to run yourself dry and that person is going to continue to be exactly who they are until you die out, right? They find another host. That's how parasites work, right? If the host I currently have dies out, I still need to eat. So I'm a dip, right? I'm not going to change my state of being, right? So this whole parasitic, that's where codependency kind of comes from too, right? A good book is codependent no more. I reckon I recommend that to my clients. And in that book, you know, there's more of a focus on um, substance abuse. And it was written at a certain time, obviously. But you can pull context from it, right? And it, it, it takes you being mindful of what the book is saying. And I find that important whenever, you know, there are books, right? The Four Agreements is another one. These books that kind of teach you about life it's so necessary to put it within context of yours, which means not not taking every single thing that's said as law and being able to interpret and pull what works for you and what doesn't. Codependent No More, you know, was about, I think, alcoholism, substance abuse, essentially. And, and it was more focused on, um, you know, women in those relationship dynamics, etc. And, um, you know, f- the... A person who's just willing to read the book and be like, oh, yeah, this is going to help me. And they see it's about alcoholism. They've never dealt with alcoholism. They're like, oh, well, yeah, this book isn't for me. Right. Versus being like, oh, there are some components outside of just this, you know, parasitic relationship that I can identify with. Right. You find the identification of what's necessary for you to be um, to have an opportunity to evolve, basically. So you pull context. Same with four agreements. You know, the whole don't take things personally. When you read it, sometimes it comes off like, wait, what is he saying? Because, you know, things are going to bother me and this is going to happen. And it's like, well, spin it. I don't need to take the relationship personally. In other words, I don't need to take someone's behavior 
I don't need to wear it as if it's my behavior, right? When when we say don't take things personal, it means don't wear it, okay? A lot of times people say don't take things personal from other people and it sounds like don't let it, you shouldn't let it bother you. You should have no emotions or no response toward a person that's treating you poorly and that's bullshit. We're humans and you should have a response because if I respond to something, that's information. It's going to tell me something about my past traumas, things that I haven't worked through or it's going to allow me to recognize when someone's not taking care of me. There's information there when we do have a response to something. So the whole not taking things personal is like, listen, I take my relationships very personal, but I don't have to take you personal, which means that at some point in time, if I recognize that your behavior does not align necessarily with a healthy relationship in my eyes and, you know, for my life. All right, we move on and that's all good. Right. I'm not going to take you as my personal belongings. Your behavior is not mine to take. So I leave you where you are. Or I reevaluate the relationship to prevent it from being parasitic. (laughs) All right. So, yeah, just these are all things to just think about in terms of what a parasite looks like in a relationship. If you're you're parasitic, even with family members, right, the whole enmeshment, um, sometimes parentification, all these things can um, can symbolize a parasitic relationship to some degree where there's a need. Um, There's someone feeding off the host and sometimes without their knowledge. Okay, and we consider it normalcy because it's happening, but it doesn't mean that it's healthy. Okay, so with that in mind, you know, take care of yourselves, do the clearing that you need to clear, be mindful of your own behavior, and recognize how you show up. You know, what are relationships to you actually, and what do they actually look like? Um, and just do the work, all right. Um, if you want to do the work, hit me up. I have uh, openings available for coaching. And yeah, I would love to work with you if you're willing to do the work. If you love to work and you you there's something challenging or you're just trying to be a better human in life, reach out. The, the link is in the bio of this episode. And I would love to hear from you. Um, shout out to my Patreon subscribers. If you want to become a patron, you get early access to these episodes ad free you also get bonus content let's go and yeah it's just a all kind of inclusive process where you just keep getting more of this um apple subscribers flight club same thing it's a good time and i appreciate the people who go the extra mile to make sure this nest is continuing to build Okay, so with that being said, y'all have an amazing day, have an amazing week, take care of yourselves.